Surprise, we're playing a game. This is Seven Wonders Duel. You're gonna set up by making a pyramid of cards, okay? <laughs> Games have surprised us. I don't think it's that kind of surprise, really. Oh, no? I think it's more just like games that we, for the most part, I need to adjust my list. Weren't really expecting to like, but we did. Yes, these are games that far, that really, what you could title this is like games that exceed far exceed their expectations. Yes. I'm Nick, by the way. I'm Mike. We're the brothers Murph. Um, and yeah, we're doing top subscribe 10 games. Subscribe and like this video, please. Indeed. We're going to talk about top 10 games that surprise us. Now, this is going to be positive surprises. These are not top 10 disappointments. Maybe we'll do that list at some point. Probably not, we don't like being negative. But yeah. unless, uh, this will be positive surprises, games that we weren't expecting to like, or maybe just did a lot of different stuff that we weren't really expecting. Just games that really surprised us in a very good way. Over, we're each gonna have our own list. Usually we kind of combine our list. We're each gonna yeah. have our own list. And then over on our Patreon, we're gonna have 10 more games. So five more games from each of us uh, that really, really surprised us. So make sure to check out our Patreon if you wanna check out that Please list do. as well. But yeah, Mikey, let's go ahead and get into games that surprised us. All right, so number 10, to start right off, I'll begin here. The number 10th game that uh, was really surprising to me, it's a game called Remember Our Trip. Yeah. This game surprised me because this is a game that we've talked about many times in unique game lists and things like that. It was a game I had never seen uh, yeah. a, a game like this before. And never since, to be fair. <laughs> never since. This is ultimately kind of a, a spatial tile laying game where you're going to be putting in certain types of buildings and stuff as you're remembering a trip that you had uh, to like Kyoto, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and you are putting tiles into certain shapes to be able to put buildings down to like kind of confirm memories of like, this is where the park was in the city. This is yeah. where a hotel was. Yeah. But we have this where we're all kind of working to remember the same trip. Yeah, and we remember it a little differently sometimes. Sometimes we do. So if you're the first person to, to make the shape of a hotel, then on the central board, there's nothing in those spaces that's been placed down. You get to place a tile that now cements that as the reality that's, of like... We're no this, longer in the matrix. Yeah, yeah, this hotel was in fact here. And then what you can do as, as other players is try to make sure that you build a hotel in the exact same area because you get matching bonuses if you're making kind of like correct memories. Yeah. That's how that kind of plays out. So it's just a super unique, super interesting weird. game. Really fun. Where you're placing out tiles, you're drafting kind of a lot of these tiles, and you're putting down stuff to make parks and stuff like that. It's just something I've never seen before. It was really delightful. We still enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, and it was just surprising. the sheer fact that like, I didn't know a game could be like that before. Yeah. yeah. And that was really eye-opening. Yeah. Awesome. My number 10 um, is Patchwork Doodle. <laughs> um, nice, yeah, yeah. Just because, honestly, like Patrick Doodle is not like super unique. It's not like the, I, li I like the game a lot, but it's just like, it's just when, when Patchwork Doodle, there's so many different kinds of Patchwork. Now, there's also now like the Moving Truck one, which is literally just Patchwork. Like, like Shelfie Stacker maybe or something? No, Shelfie Stacker is a different one. But yeah, it's something like that where you're like moving around and it's like they have used the Patchwork thing a lot. Yes. And so there's many different versions of Patchwork that are literally just the same. They just have different tiles. Uh, like different patterns on the tiles. So it's one of the things when Patrick Toodle came out, I said, okay, cool. Like we, we're just, we're really just milking this patchwork really as much as we possibly can. can. And I love Patrick. No no shade to Patchwork or Uve. Get those millions, Uve. Do you, baby? Yeah. But it's just like, I was like, all right, whatever. Like it's gonna be fine. We got it because it was like 15 bucks. And we played it and it's really, really fun. And it is Patchwork the roll and write was what it yeah. is. Yeah. And so you basically set up these um, cards in a big circle, kind of like you do with Patchwork and you um, roll a die and that'll move kind of the pawn in between things and then everyone chooses uh, the cards that are kind of nearby and then you get to then draw that in there. But it's nice because there's some extra little things that are different where you can have these kind of special powers where you can like fill in stuff or you can like cut one in half and then fill it in. So there's, there's actually a little bit more flexibility than with yes. patchwork. And again, for the most part, it's like 95% of patchwork. It's just a roll and write. So it's more portable. We play it on planes a lot. Yeah. It's really, really, really fun. I really like Patchwork Doodle. Again, it's not the greatest game ever made, but in terms of like, I was just like, cool, this is just another Patchwork. We don't really need this. And then being like, wow, I really, really liked it. The fact that it stayed in our collection. We take, take it anytime we're traveling. I really, really like Patchwork Doodle. It's number 10. Number nine was kind of one of the very, very few Kickstarter regrets we've ever had, and that is Marvel United. Oh, I see. Regret that we didn't back. Yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. I should have. Uh, I, like, I thought we were saying positive. No, no. <laughs> that, regret that we did not back it. Marvel United was a big surprise for a couple different reasons. It's because, one, it's a big Simon Spin Master minis game. Yes. So you expect it to be like 
Rising Sun or Zombicide, these kind of big, huge, generally complicated, tons and tons and tons of minis. And it's really not that. It's a very simple, very quick game. It's like 30 minute game where you are taken on Marvel heroes, you can be like Black Widow and you know, Ant-Man and stuff like that. Superman, Batman. Exactly. The Flash. It's a weird God, Can you imagine if they did like yeah. DC United? Oh God, never, <sighs> never could. I don't know if you get that IP, but if you can, it'd be huge. Um, and I'd back it. It'd be less good, I'll tell you that. Uh, probably. Here um, trash. But nonetheless, and then you're taking on some kind of big mastermind villain who's going around mess up the city. But the, the, the reason why it surprised me is because those kind of CMON games are always kind of hit or miss for me and you. And then this one's really, really fun. But mostly what surprised me is how fun it was. And then again, how it's just so different because it's a very quick game. Because I've complained for years about like big these big, huge minis games where it's like yeah. you get so much content, but the games tend to be relatively long. They're like two, three hour games. And you're, you're like, never gonna make use I'm of that never content. gonna play with this because this game is too long. I was like, give, I've been saying for years, give me a, one of these giant games that's 30 minutes long. And they did, and I just ignored it because I assumed it was like everything else, and then I missed the whole Kickstarter. I since have gotten a lot of the Kickstarter stuff. I've bought it secondhand, which has been more expensive, but I love Marvel United. I think it's incredible, and I love the fact that it's like 30 minutes, and it just really, really surprised me. Nice. Um, I thought it was, I thought it was great. So that's my number nine. What's number nine? My number nine is Where Words. Fair. Now this is a was I a think surprise. this was on our other list what, last time we did this. This might have been on there. Because Where Words is great and a huge surprise. It could have been on my list. Yeah, so this uh, the reason this was a surprise, this is a fun, basically 20 questions with a trader. Weird I'll idea. tell you this, you don't even need to buy the game. Just get the app. It's free. Buy the game. And Support board game companies. The whole thing. But yeah, but buy it. But you don't have to. But you do. You should. Uh, Where Words is was a surprise because we would played like One Night Ultimate, Werewolf, Vampire, there's a million versions of those, which is such a cool, fun game. Yes. In theory. <laughs> but. It's got some mechanical. It's got that, like all these secret roles and people are moving stuff around the table. And if you're sitting here with your eyes closed, but you feel me go like reach or like, it's impossible to not notice when other people yes. are moving. And so. It's very hard to not cheat. hard to not cheat. Yes. Where words is just simpler in that you just, everything's run by the app, tells you when to open your eyes and stuff just like those other games, but there's no moving stuff around. Everything's controlled in the app. There's words that show up, but you have to open up and look, but you don't have to move to do that. So it's much easier to hide. And then the whole kind of 20 questions, uh, you know, foundation for a game yeah. is really great. Foundation, you know, 20 questions with a trader. It's just a cool, simple idea. Yeah, because the trader's just trying to divert yeah. stuff, but not being too obvious. Yeah, so we kind of like run out of our interest in the un One Night Ultimate yeah. Werewolf Vampire games and stuff. But then this one, I was like, man, yes, this finally does the thing that we were so yes. frustrated by. Yes. And so that's why it's on this list. That's why I was on the list last time. Yeah. It's just like, I was like, oh, cool, because I didn't have much faith left. Yeah. <laughs> but then I saw it, I was like, this might work, and it works actually great, and yeah. it's fantastic. It easily could have made my list. It's a really good choice. Where Words was very surprising. Yes. It's great. Go very buy it today. Indeed. Pay for it. Pay for it. My number eight is similar to my number nine, and that is based on a, a kind of a, an existing game. And this one I found much better than the existing game. This is Splendor Duel. Ooh, yeah. Uh, this this could have made my list. Yeah, yeah. This is on 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 the list because uh, Splendor is fine. I will say that like it's not a bad game or anything. Obviously, it's great. People have loved it for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's an objectively good game. But to us, the rule set just seems super arbitrary about how many gems you can take and when and why. And it's just so just, mechanical. It's yeah. so mechanical. That it makes your eyes bleed. Uh, Splendor Duel for us takes all that. And the way you get your gems is now on a, on a board. You have to take things in a line. So it's just like a little more tactical, mm -hmm. a little more tactile as you're grabbing uh, uh, those, your little tokens to be able to play out cards and stuff. So the kind of engine building of Splendor is very much here in Splendor Duel which I really appreciate, but it's just much more fun for me to think of like the spatial puzzle of how do I get these uh, gems to be able to pay for these cards. And there's also multiple ways to win, which is interesting. Uh, it's just, it kind of takes a kind of like, the rules are this because, and I know that's how all games are made. True, right. But like, it's just, they don't, <laughs> it's so apparent in Splendor that it makes it hard for me to remember the rules. Fair. Like you can only take this if there's four in the stack. I'm like, I don't like you, I don't like you. Uh, and this one, <laughs> makes it just more sensible. Like I yeah. can take these because they're in a line. And that for me works better for my mm -hmm. brain. It's more portable. It's There's multiple uh, really wind fun. conditions. Multiple That's wind what conditions. I like about it, yeah. Splendor Duel is just the one for me. I like it so much more and I didn't have a, a ton of faith because Splendor is so kind of blah for us. Yeah. And it really exceeds those yeah. expectations. Yeah, it's totally fair. Yeah. 
My number eight is going to be a trick-taking game called Niet. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We've played this game. So the main reason why nowadays I'd be very interested in Niet. Niet is a trick-taking game yeah. where you are doing kind of normal trick-taking, but the rules change every round. And then the people are the ones who get to decide which rules are there. Like these yep. things are going to be trumps. These things are going to be, you want to score these things. And it's just changing every single round. The reason why it was so surprising when I played it was because at that point, I really hadn't played that many trick-taking games. Sure. And I didn't really like trick-taking games. Sure. Nowadays, I really, really like trick-taking games. So nowadays, something like Miet would be like, ooh, that sounds cool. That yeah. sounds really, really interesting. But when I played it, I was kind of like, I don't know, man. We were in Aircon the first time we were there. Yep. And we were playing with, like, I think uh, it was Matthew, Paula, Dave, and it was kind of all of us just playing this game. And I was just like, I don't know if I want to play this because, like, I don't really like trick-taking games. Ironically enough, that was also the weekend where we discovered the crew. Um, that was an important week. For it was a very important week for trick-taking games. Yeah. And so this is just so much fun. Again, it's just trick-taking, but again, I really like trick-taking games where things are constantly changing like that. Yeah. I really like indulgence for that same reason, where like the kind of win conditions are changing. But yet, it's even more involved, where like you want to win because you want to be the one who gets to choose what happens. Okay, I want to choose this because I have these in my cards. And it's just kind of complicated, but it works really, really well. And I really, really liked it. And I've never seen it like in a store. I know Yellow carries it, but I feel like I never see Yellow stuff anywhere anymore. Yeah, um, I don't know. And so, because it's an older game, it's for like, like 1997, you know. Yeah. Um, and so I really would like to pick it up because I really liked it, but it surprised me so much because at that point I really didn't like trick taking games. Sure. And um, I really thought I was going to hate this because this was like, hey, it's trick taking, but even more complicated. And I was like, this sounds terrible. <laughs> and I really, really liked it. And so, yeah. and yet is my number eight. I liked it a lot. Let's get number seven. Number seven is going to be Monster Hunter Worlds. Oh, yeah. That's a good pick. Right? And so Monster Hunter World is a big game by Steamforge Games, who makes a lot of games that we generally would not generally enjoy because, like, we just don't really like these big minis, campaign games. IP-based. IP-based. A, lot of, for us a lot of dice rolling. Yeah. We have horrible dice luck. It just a lot of those kinds of games we don't really like. We don't really pay attention to them that much. But um, we got uh, in touch with them because we were. I, I went out there to play the um, Elden Ring game, which was also quite fun, actually, because it was kind of a deviation from their other games. Yeah. And then Monster Hunter World, um, we played for them, and we I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Because it kind of takes... This is based off the video game Monster Hunter World. And in this game, you are just finding a big monster. You're going to this tiny little quest part, and then you're just fighting. It's basically it's just, just boss, battling. boss fights. Yes. Yeah. And that's what's really, really fun. Because there's no like questing, there's no like second, like the Elden Ring game, there's a whole first half of the game, the whole second half of the game for each quest, which is fun and I do like it. But this one's like just get straight into the fight. When we played like the Dark Souls game, you eventually get to like the boss battles, but it takes like you so have much to you get have there. to go through so many different yeah. battles essentially to get there. It's like this, you're just in there, you're on the board with this huge, literally huge monster. And that's what it is. And that's like the video game too. And it's really, really fun. It's got a really fun kind of um, stamina track where you're, when you want to play cards to like dodge or attack, you're putting in a stamina track that fills up. So you constantly have to make sure you're managing that. It's really, really fun. The game itself is actually relatively simple in terms of like yeah. what you're doing, how you play. And the minis are great as they always are with Steam Ford stuff. And I really, really liked Monster Hunter World a lot. And it was a big surprise because it's one of those, it's very much one of those games we look at both of us and go like, nah. Yeah. Nah. And nice reminder to be open minded. Yeah, you know? exactly. Because there's always gonna be one or two games out there of a genre you don't like that you do like for the most part. And this is one of those for me. And so Monster Hunter World's my number seven. Nice. My number seven is uh Long Shot the Dice Game. We've talked a lot about how I, this game was surprising. For I didn't us. have this on my list because I figured it'd be on your list. Yeah. <laughs> um this is a roll and write version uh, uh of uh, Long shot. It's a, a game where you're putting bets on a horse race, yeah. and you're you're affecting. Uh, and this is a, a game where you are affecting the race a little bit, but ultimately you're rolling yeah. dice, and certain horses are going to move, uh, and they're doing one lap around. And as things change in the race, you might place bets on certain horses. Mm -hmm. Certain horses are more likely to win. The one horse is much more likely to win than long shot uh, horse. That's number eight. Uh, they have more cards. Number one is more cards that will allow them to activate than the eight does, at least to start the game. Uh, so it's just super fun because it's a really simple roll and write. We're going to roll the dice based on what horse moves and stuff and what number comes up. You're going to be able to do a thing on your board where that's going to be putting uh, helmets and jerseys on the riders. Uh, you can buy horses. You can do some stuff in the concessions, which kind of gives you bonuses by completing rows and columns, mm -hmm. place bets, uh, and stuff like that. So what's really fun is... 
this game, always, the race always ends up dynamic yes. where one horse seems way out of it, then they get back into the mix. One horse starts off hot, they cool off. And so there's a lot of like, okay, well, now this is not going so maybe I should place a bet over here. I, I got to get some money, so I got to complete a concession. It's just really fun, really simple, simultaneous turns to place one to eight players. And this is a game that actually plays one to eight really well across yeah. the board. That never happens. Yeah. If you have a game range that's like two to nine, probably not a good game. Uh, at least not at all player counts, but this one is. Yeah, and so really is. there's a lot of things where I'm like, you know, we, we agreed to do a sponsored stream yeah. of this game. Not really expecting much. I had never heard of it, you know, uh, or anything like that. And um, it absolutely blew us away. It's one that we've showed to so many people. It's yeah. so delightful. Um, yeah. It's just been one of the most pleasant surprises. Where yeah. I'm like, wow, this is just so nice and yeah. fun. The art style's great. Can't say enough great stuff. Long yeah. the ice game. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That was your number, number seven, seven right? Yeah. All right, let's get number six. My number six is on this list because we traded for it very randomly. And the fact that this came into our life at all was just sort of like, whatever. This is key flow. Oh, yeah. So we got this game at the end of a convention. One thing that's kind of fun, if you're working with publishers and stuff, they yeah, often have like a right. couple leftover games. I was games. like, how did we get this game? That's right, and, yeah. Uh, and what people will do is they'll go around to different booths and they'll trade games around. Yeah. Because like kind of everyone's trying to get rid of their inventory. They don't want to ship it back home. Yeah. There's just a couple of like spare bits. And so it's a kind of this fun like second market that happens. Yeah, it's weird. And so yeah. we go walking around with a copy of Fireball Island when it first came out, which is like a hot commodity. And uh, we're going around trying to shop to this person, that person. We're not really getting any bites. And then we come across uh, uh, Key Flow. And I'm like, I'd heard of Key Flower. And I was like, oh, I think maybe this will be cool. I don't know. And like, we really, we really like just needed to get rid of Fireball Island. We had yeah. it at home. So we're like, we can't take this game home yeah. with someone us. Someone needs to take this game from us. Someone yeah. has to take it. And so someone said, like, I'll give you Key Flow for it. And we're like, okay, sure. And then Key Flow turned out to be this amazing game. <laughs> Again, it's based on Key Flower. You're playing through a year and you are kind of building up buildings and production. The game production, you know, items, wood, stone, and stuff like that to certain buildings to kind of score your points in the back half of the year. The fall and the winter are gonna be all kind of scoring yeah. cards. It's based on Key Flower, but this now makes it a card drafting game. Yeah. It removes some of the, the viciousness yeah, of it's Key not Flower. Mean, yeah. It's not mean, you know, I can use Nick's buildings, but I don't affect him by doing that, things like that. Uh, so it's just a little bit smoother, which we really enjoy. Yeah. So Key Flow is just this game that we've loved. We've talked so much about it. Um, and it was just a random trade. Yeah, talk about going in with no expectations. Yeah. I was trying to get Rise of Tribes that day. That's I was right. trying to get Rise of Tribes, That's and someone right. was just like, no, I don't want it, which I was still like, really? You don't want Fireball for that? Whatever. That's great. But it was so much better because Key Flow is still in our collection. Yeah. stick around, and I cannot say still that right. Rise of Tribes necessarily would have done that. Yeah. So uh, it was surprising because it's so like, funny. Yeah, we, it's, I didn't we think weren't about that. seeking it out. No. We didn't know what it was, and it turned out to be this great game. So I was like, wow, how lucky yeah. <laughs> that we happened to get turned down and had to go over yeah, here and really get key flow. That was yeah. amazing. Um, all right, cool. That's uh, your number six. My number, My number six, six is Don't Mess With That Gosh Darn Cthulhu. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. Don't Mess With Cthulhu is a social deduction game uh, that we also played with like Paula and Matthew and Dave. <clears throat> Although this one was at Dice Tower in Dice Tower East instead of um, of uh, yes. Aircon. Yep. So this is a social deduction game where you- we played at Aircon as well, but we you, played at Dice Tower East You played at Aircon? Oh, yeah, first, yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. So, so this is a game, again, where you are, uh, it's general Cthulhu stuff where there's like cultists and Cthulhu, and then yeah. there are just like villagers, and, or investigators, I think with what they are in yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah. And um, if you're on the investigator team, you are trying to flip over, you're trying to find essentially three elder signs, and everyone is given essentially three tiles, and some of those will be elder signs, some of those will be, uh, one of those will be Cthulhu. Um, and all this kind of stuff. And so, and then, and then cold distance and, or just blank nothings. And so as the investigators, you want to uh, find three of these elder signs. If you're part of the cultist or part of Cthulhu's team or whatever, you want to just waste time until you run out of time. Because yeah. if a certain amount of rounds or something like that goes by, then the investigators lose and the other team wins. And so this is, this, I now know this with social deduction games, but this was kind of the first social deduction games that made me realize this, because I don't really like social deduction games. Yeah. But this one I like, because it does the thing I do like, where the traders have a way to hide. Yes. With Mike, with werewords e earlier, the werewolf and werewords has a way to hide and they can blend in really easily. A lot of social deduction games come down to just just lie better than everyone else. And yes. it's like, that's like, just not fun. You have to fun. be skilled as a liar and you're like, 
Yeah, well, well. because you can be an investigator and you have your three tiles in front of you and you know, because you get to look at them, you know that two of them are Elder Signs, one of them is blank. But then you have to shuffle them and put them out in front so of you. So you don't know where they So you are. don't know where it is. And so you'd be like, Mike, pick me. Because you say like, hey, pick me, choose one of these. I have two Elder Signs. And you might actually have two Elder Signs. Mike goes, okay, flip over the leftmost one. You flip the left one, that's the blank one. And Mike immediately is like, that's a freaking cultist right there. And you're like, and you're like, no, there actually is two. So I never. And you're like, please, trust me, trust me. And so it's there's a way to hide because as a cultist, you could have an elder sign and be like, hey, pick on me. And they pick on you, they flip over an elder sign. Everyone goes, okay, cool, Nick's cool. And you're like, no, I'm not. And it's yeah. just like, it's really, really fun. And man, this one surprised me. I sat down this game and be like, all right, I guess we'll play this social action game. It'll be fun because the people we're with are fun. Sure. But the game is probably bleh, And the game is insanely fun. It's really fun. Don't Mess Cthulhu is great. It's one of my favorite social action games. Um, I absolutely love it. And uh, that's number six. Let's get number five. Number five is a recent one. And this is actually Stalker, the board game. I thought this would be on your list. Yeah. Uh, I really uh, like this one. I was curious if it would make we it. We have a uh, playthrough we can check out um, on our channel, and uh, I really, really liked it. It kind of made me be like, man, I wish we had more time for these kind of these kinds of games, because we just don't generally. But this is based on Stalker the video game, and you're kind of this like kind of like alternate re alternate history post-Chernobyl, very radiated everything, there's mutants everywhere and stuff like that. Um, and you are kind of trying to stealth around. And in this one, you're doing different missions by Awakened Realm to like Tainted Grail. It's kind of, I think, based off the same kind of system in terms of like the stories and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so you're going around, you have a mission. On the mission, each one will have different cards on the board that blend in with the background. But you can basically go there and then investigate stuff or flip these cards over, see what's there, which is nice because it means they can use the same map tiles with just new cards each time. And you're doing some kind of mission. Um, it kind of depends on which one you're doing. But the cool thing about this one is because it's kind of like, again, you have big guns and stuff like that. And it's always mutants and you can like shoot them. They're going to attack you if they have like line of sight and stuff. But the game is much more about stealth. You really don't yeah. want to go in guns a blazing because noise is what attracts everything. Because you make a gunshot, it makes a lot of noise. You have to drop these noise tokens into your spot. And anything that is within range of hearing that is going to start moving towards you. And so you really are like... Should I shoot now? Should I do this now? I think I can shoot and get away or at least get behind a wall so they right. can't see me or something like that. And so you can mess around with it. And it, I thought it was so much fun. So Wake and Realms, they do really good stuff. The minis, of course, were like great. But I just thought the way the game worked, the stealth part of it, the choices of when to make noise, when not to make noise. You could do things like throw flash grenades or bang grenades, which make a lot of noise. But then you could just like throw it around a corner so things go towards that. So there's a lot yeah. of like cool diversion stuff. Really cool. It was really fun. I really, really, really liked it. Um, I really hope we get a copy of it because I want to try it a little bit because I, I, I really enjoyed it. And I wish we had more time for games like that because we honestly just don't. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to make time in the future because I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So that's number five, Stalker. Number five for me is uh, another speaking of campaign games. This is uh, Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Why was this surprising for you? <laughs> because... Did you expect it to be trash? Did you hear that, no, Matt Leacock? No. I knew how much we liked Pandemic. Yeah. And we went into Pandemic Legacy, and when we kind of did our playthrough it in a day uh, challenge, mm -hmm. the ups and downs and twists and turns of the story... Still surprised you. ...were still so... It was so amazing. Interesting, okay. It was so cool opening up boxes and seeing like, because you take something like the first, the first game you play of Pandemic and Pandemic Legacy is very Pandemic. Yes. Very, it's yes. the exact same game. Yeah. And then the way that that gets twisted and turned around. Yeah. Where things change and now your challenges are much different. Yes. And it's very different. That was so cool to me. I, I was so blown away by it. That's interesting, yeah. And it, my, my, my expectation was way high, and it still went way beyond that. That's fair, because like, you go into it, people tell you, like, there's some crazy twists, and you're like, okay, like, that's yeah, cool. Sure, sure, so sure. we knew those were going to happen, but they still blew us and out of the water. blew my mind. Yeah, that's fair. I was like, this is amazing. It made sense why I went to number one on Board Game Geek. Yeah. Uh, it was so cool. And so, again, I knew I loved Pandemic. Yeah. And the fact they were able to do something so different with it while still being very pandemic yes. was just incredible. So that's why it's on my list. Uh, Good call. It, it, I, I, didn't, I didn't expect it to be possible to exceed the expectations because right. they were already high. Yeah, that's fair. Blew it out of the water. Totally fair. Yeah. So cool. That's number five for me. Pandemic Legacy Season 1. All of them, for that matter, are good. Yeah. That was the first one we played, so... I just wasn't prepared for what was possible. Uh, all three of them are great, though. Play them all. They're great. Yeah. All right, let's get number four. 
Number four is uh, Paint the Roses. And this is... Really? Um, Why was this surprising for you? Because, to be fair, I guess I liked it more... Uh, I'll, you go, go ahead. I didn't this have a, my surprise list. I but. didn't have a ton of expectation going into this game. Uh, you know, I thought the, the you know, North Star, we like North Star. Yep. Uh, the theme I thought was neat, but I heard like a little things and like I just hadn't played like that many cooperative yes. deduction games where uh, you're all, you know, you're not trying to outfox the other person or something. We're all working toward the same thing and, and the whole like clue giving with these tiles. You place a tile, people put how many matches are there. And then all the discussion that comes out of that mm -hmm. of like, well, why didn't they grab that tile? They could have placed that tile with the with the diamond bush if that was what they were going for. All of the discussion that comes up to that, the degree of difficulty with the game, the art style. Yes. We have the deluxe version, the tiles, the production is insane. Yeah. The minis, which you painted, amazing. It just all came together so well. Yeah. That and then also the the, the cooperative deduction is so fun. Yes. And I didn't really know that a game that did cooperative deduction could do it that well. Yeah. Fair. Um so it really kind of it, it wasn't any one thing. There's just like little pieces where all these things come together where I'm like, this is an all timer. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't have expected that game to be an all time type of game. Yeah, and it is. I, that's it's interesting. That's interesting you put it that way, because I almost put like either Turing Machine or Search Planet X on here because sure, sure. I, it, it made me discover on the list. I don't like deduction games. <laughs> yeah. I do like deduction games if I can play them solo. And that's what sure. made me discover that. Sure. I guess I do like deduction games if they're co-op or solo. And I guess that this was surprising that decorum similar thing. Yeah. But this is what kind of like, oh, I do like co-op sedu deduction games. That's, that's what that's it was. That's fair. That's totally fair. That was fair. the main thing. I was like, wow, this works really well. And then you it's add so the good. art, the production value. Yeah. The degree of difficulty, because man, if you make a couple mistakes, that queen is up on you. Yeah, fast. and there's like all these expansions to make it harder, and we haven't yes. used any of them. There's so much more to explore. We've got like barely any of that. So yeah, that's good. Paint call. the roses is just like one of the, like the some of its parts. I mean, it all came, yeah, all came together perfectly. Yeah, it's it's a masterpiece. So good. All right, mine that's four, right? Number four. Okay, my number four is uh is gonna be King of Twelve. Yeah, you were very surprised by this game. This is a game uh, that I had. And this is no shade to the people who made it or anything like that. I had no expectations. It's unassuming. For it. It's yes, an unassuming. It's incredibly game. unassuming. It's just like a uh, die of the crown on the front. You're it's like, a game okay. by Lucky Duck. It, it, they sent us a bunch of games. This was just one of them. Yeah. A lot of times when publishers send you a bunch of like smaller games, they're a lot of times hits. they're not all hits. Yeah. This one is just kind of like a white box, like Mike said, with like a die and a crown. It's yeah. very unassuming. And just like I we were gonna be playing it with people at last Gen Con. Yep, here we go. So we had to learn the game, and it turns out that it's insanely fun. It's really and fun. so basically everyone has this hand of cards with different, like essentially different roles on them, and everyone has the exact same hand of cards. And what you want to do is every single round, you're gonna play a card, you're gonna roll a die, a D12, and you're gonna play a card, and you basically, for the most part, you want to be at 12. You want to have the highest possible value. You can yes. even sorry, it's, card it's above, play, 12. above yes. twelve. But the higher the you don't want the highest value. Usually twelve or higher is yeah. going to be the highest. So you can play a card if you rolled like an eight. You can play a card that like increases it by seven. Like your your value is increased by seven. So now you have fifteen, and you're like, great, that's pretty easy. I'll just play the highest one. The issue is if there's a whole bunch of ways you can essentially get knocked out of the round. Yes, if. Two people play the same card, those cards don't exist anymore. Yep. Or two or more people. So if you're like, I'm gonna play the high one, someone else plays the high one, you're done. Yep. Um, if at the end of the round, two or more people have the same value, they're out. Yep. And so you're you're trying to, you're, it's this giant mind game of like, yeah. okay, I know, and everyone has the same like seven or eight cards, so you, and you know what people have played. Like, okay, Mike's already played this one, so I could play this one. Okay, but he hasn't played this card, so maybe, and if he plays that card, then our values are gonna be the same. So, and so you start getting this thing, and there's also like, I think it's the crow or something like that, but there's basically one where if you play it, it means that for this round, the lowest yeah, value. I think the knight, I think, does The knight that. does, yeah. yeah. The yeah. lowest value does it. So it's, the real game is, is when are people gonna play their knights? Yep, you get, everyone has it in their pocket. So there's all these different roles, You're like, that card is always uh, in play. When, when are they gonna play the knight? When are they gonna play the knight? Do yeah. I do it? Because if I do it right now, I only have a one, yeah. but Mary only has a one. So if she plays it, I, and so it becomes this mind game, and it's it's really quick, it's snappy, and it is so much fun. And yeah. then on top of that, there's other roles in the box as well. It's not just those same roles. So there's yep. other stuff to think, and they change it where you can like flip your die over, do all this crazy stuff. 
it was insanely surprising. It's so fun. I had no expectations and I thought it was so much fun. And so King of 12 was my number four because I just, it blew me out of the water with how fun it was. I absolutely adore that game. It maybe so should have been higher on my list. Now whereabouts are you for a Queen of 12 about here? There's, there's a Queen of 12, oh, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, then I'm in the stratosphere yeah. at this point. Yeah, right there above the screen. Here for it. Uh, so that's my number four, King of 12. I freaking love it. My number three is a, uh, a game, a big old game. This is a game called Burn Cycle. Um, yeah, 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 this is a I'm big. I'm surprised it's not higher, to be honest, because uh, yeah, you really fell in love. With this I game. really love this game. Burn Cycle is a big chip theory game where you are robots and you're kind of trying to overthrow your human oppressors because they suck. Thank goodness, about um, damn time. About damn time. But you are like not like battle robots, like I robot or something like that. You're like janitors, jan You like sweep. You know, they, there service are some industry. that are like, big, but yeah, you're mostly like service kind of droids, basically. So you have to overthrow them through stealth. And so every um, game you're playing this, you'll have a mission. And that mission is going to be in one of the three corporations. And you have to do different stuff. You might have to like go over here into this room and break into this terminal and then get to the next floor. And then the next floor, you have to like break into the CEO's suite and steal this and da da. So you're kind of, and you can fight, but it's generally not advised to because they have these big mechs and these right. big mechs are patrolling around constantly. So you're constantly trying to hide, not make noise, not be seen. If you get seen, you got to get out of the way real quick because they're going to come investigate you. It's really, really fun. This was kind of, I think this was more or less the first like chip theory game we played. Um, we played too many bones a while. A long before, time before that. Yeah. And this is a very different game. But Chip Theory games are big, very, very, very complicated. And this one is no different than that. Um, but, and I just didn't, I was like, I'm sure it'll be cool. A lot of Chip Theory games are kind of like, they're masterpieces if you're willing to put in the time oh, yeah. to learn them. There's so much to explore. If you're willing to do that, they're masterpieces. Yeah. But it's hard for a lot of people to do that, us very much included. But Burn Cycle just took my heart for some reason. I loved it. And I was just like, wow, I was not expecting like this anywhere near as much as I did. But I did. And so Burn Cycle is my number three. Um, I really, really love it. Very nice. My number three is uh, it's surprising that's on the surprise list because it's from that John D. Clare. Sir John D. Clare. What is this? This is Eco's First Continent. Oh, yeah? The reason being... It kind of just came out, I feel like. It kind of you know? just came out. And there wasn't much fanfare. There still hasn't been that much fun fanfare. Not enough. We, we are the ones uh, evangelizing. And yeah. we played it and we're like, this game is amazing. Yeah. Like, why aren't people talking about this game more? Uh, and it's done fine for itself. But uh, Eco's First Continent is a game where you are all manipulating a central bit of land and water, putting mountains down, trees, populating it with animals, Changing landscape, adding to it, tearing it down, yeah, adding water, whatever it might you're be. You're essentially going through like millions and millions of years exactly. <laughs> of a planet, right? right? Of yeah. a planet. And so and you're playing these cards, uh, and you are every turn drawing out tiles that are kind of like bingo style. You call out sun. And if on any of your cards you have a sun symbol, you can put one of your energy tokens or cubes if you have it on to that. If you fill up that card with all their symbols, you get to activate that card, which is how you met, you know. Hopefully really simple, simple game. Relatively was, simple. Yeah. You can put off some crazy combos and stuff. Nick is like a master at this game. Just You just <laughs> understand it in ways I don't get. Blessed. But it is so stinking fun. And it just kind of came out. And it's from one of the best designers of our time. Uh, and we're like, why? Like... I would not have thought it was so good because there wasn't everyone talking about yep. it. And then we played it and we're like, everyone should be talking about I this. Will say I will say, at, at this point, this was still early-ish in John D's reign. Yeah, I mean, Space Base had come out, but... Space but, Base come out, Mystic Veil had come out, so people knew he was, but nowadays, if John declares a game come out, it's, it's instant a, it's news, an event. right? Yeah. It's an event. Yeah. This was still early-ish, but even then, it still feels like it just kind of went... Same with the expansion, kind of went like, it's out. Yeah, we're like, what? And it's right. It's so good. It's such a good game. Yeah, We've fair. talked about it a ton. Fair. It's been on many underrated lists for us, <laughs> yeah. hidden gems. Uh, but yeah, I, I was just like, did not expect that we were going to get that because of sort of the the, yeah. the quietness that it came out. Yeah, with. fair. But yeah, Eco's First Continent, so good. That's my number three. All right, let's get number two. This number two is a game that uh, was was brought to us to try and play. Uh, and so as a result, I was definitely high up on my horse. And what I heard was IP based game. Yeah. Bought in a Target. <laughs> it's Universal Movie Monsters. And I'm like, this game Horrible. is going to be trash, but I'll play it. Our sister brought it, wanted to try it. I was like, you know what? This is horrified, by the way. She, it's horrified. <laughs> she literally has a creature with a black lagoon tattooed on her she leg. She does. I was like, this is a rosy, this is a rosy special. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll try it. 
And it's amazing. It's yeah. such a fun, that's fair, cooperative pick up and deliver. Borrow some DNA from Pandemic, bit, where yeah. you have like a little bit of player power, a little bit of thing you can do, and you're ultimately trying to get items from certain spots to certain locations to deal with these monsters. If you're fighting Dracula, you're trying to smash up his coffins and then go face him down. Yeah. If you're going against a creature from Black Lagoon, you're trying to navigate the swamp. Yeah. All little things like this, but it's simple. You have like four actions on a turn. The things you can do are simple. They're easy to understand. Yep. But they're fun. It's very feels cooperative. We can work together, talk it out amongst the table. I the production value is amazing. The minis yeah. are fun. The art's amazing. It's kind of got this black and white nighttime look with these glowing pathways. Mm -hmm. So it's just really high appeal. And I was I had no expectation that it'll be good. I Fair. just could not have been less interested. And I was so wrong. I yeah. was so wrong. We ended up getting our own copy. We got Horrified American Monsters. I'll get Horrified whatever they come out yeah, with I next. I hope they have more, honestly. It's so good. And that was definitely a humbling moment. Yeah. It was like, hey, get off your high horse. be open-minded. Yeah. Give things a chance. Yeah. You don't know what you don't know. And if you don't allow yourself to try. Well, one thing that this list has kind of shown is like IP-based games are generally good nowadays. Yes. They're, they're good more often than they're bad. And we still had that kind of gut reaction yeah. like, oh, it's going to be this. Yeah. Be don't you know? Check it out first. Yeah, uh, horrified was a great, great uh, example of that. Was like this is so good. I'm so glad that Rosie brought it one day for us to play because we may never have done it without that. Yeah, such a good game. Horrified. All right, my number two. Um, I'm actually surprised this wasn't on your list unless it's number one, which I don't think it would be. Uh, this is a game that I was excited for, interested in, but I honestly did not think it was going to work. And this is Twilight Inscription. Oh. That's a good pick. It's not on my list. That's a great pick. <laughs> because Twilight Inscription is the roll and write version of Twilight I didn't know what to Imperium. Expect. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. what to expect. Again, like I was excited for it, but like I didn't actually expect it to work. No. I didn't expect you to be able to take a game like Twilight. And granted, they don't really feel all that similar when you play them. Yeah. But it's like I wasn't expecting you to be able to take a game like Twilight Imperium and make it a generally a very large roll and write, like an hour and a half roll and write, which is humongous. It's the Twilight Imperium of Rolling rights. Yes. Which is which is fair, right? Yep. And I remember I picked this up. I was going out to Vegas. My flight got delayed for 12 hours. I could have driven there and back in that time. Um, and so I went to a local game store, Geeky Tees, which you check out if you're ever, um, Do it. ever right. in the valley. But um, And I, I saw it there and I got it. I just bought it and then I uh, had many more hours to kill. So I went upstairs to like a playing area yep. and I learned it and I soloed it and I freaking loved it. And so then I was just like, this is incredible. This is amazing. Yep. And so I was like, this is awesome. This is so much fun. And you basically have like four different boards or kind of four different sectors that all kind of work differently. You're rolling out these dice and then you're going to put those symbols on those dice somewhere on, you're going to work in one sector each each turn basically. And everyone has a, uh, a race, one of the races from like Twilight Imperium. So you have some kind of special abilities, special stuff you can do, but it's mostly you crossing off stuff. And it's like, it looks really intimidating because it's super, super big. It's actually not that complicated, No, but there's a lot of different stuff you can do. It's just really, really fun. I like it. So much so that like I, I bought it, sold it, turns out I loved it, and then we were in Vegas for a convention, and there was one night where we like were, were just tired, and so we went up to the hotel room, and we were kind of both were like, I don't really want to go to bed. Would you want to like play something? And I, it was like midnight. I was like, I could teach you Twilight Inscription. Yeah. Mike was like, okay. So we put Twilight Inscription on this like tiny little hotel desk. Just enough room, barely. And spent like th three hours <laughs> playing it, and it's so much fun. I have zero I, regrets about that. That was such oh, a fun night. Oh, the best, yeah. dude. No regrets at all. I really like Twilight Inscription. I was excited for it because I was like, I'm just excited to see what the hell this is, right? Yeah. But I wasn't actually expecting much of it, and I freaking love that game. Agreed. And so I was like, all right, that really surprised me because yeah. I wasn't expecting it to be that good. Um, and so Twilight Inscription is my number two. Who would have thunk? I had absolutely zero expectation of this game. This is a game where I, we were hired to play this game, and we're like, sure, we'll play it, we'll try it out, no worries. We had to get a big group for it. This game is about synchronized swimming. Uh -huh. This is sink or swim. Sink or... <laughs> That's a great pick. That was incredibly <laughs> surprising. I was not expecting much from that. Sink or swim is like a party game um, um, by Bezier Games, who does great games. So we probably should have had more faith in this one we going knew, into we it. We knew it'd be of a, of a, of it a, would be, a certain level. So I thought be some it was going to be probably fine. That's That was like the height of my expectation. I'm sure it's going to be fine, right? But um, this is a game where you are synchronized swimmers and you essentially are going to have to put down cards 
kind of like in certain orders. You have different colored, colored cards. But then as the rounds go on, you are learning more of these moves. They have to be synchronized. And so you essentially are going to get more rules as the round Correct. goes on. Certain things that you have to then do. And it just gets bananas. And so again, even after we learn the game, we're still kind of like, I'm sure it'll be fine. Like, we'll play it. No, whatever. And we had, it was one of the funnest game experiences we ever had. It was so like, we fun. had a stream. It was us, Paula, and Shay. And just like so much hilarity ensued. And this game, and I've seen other people play this game it's since awesome. then. And it always ends up that way where it just ends up this like big, crazy giggle fest. It's a really hard game, but you can actually do it. And you really have to work together to get these things down in certain orders and to follow all these rules together. And it just works really, really well. And it, I mean, afterwards, all of us were like, I think, I think even before the stream, we were just kind of like, the game's probably going to be like, okay. You know, yeah. just like trying to like don't expect like a massive temper expectations, temper <laughs> expectations, and we had so much fun playing this game that it is probably to this day the absolute heads and tails biggest surprise I've ever had playing a game, and it goes to show it's like don't knock until you try it, don't give it a shot, try it. give it a shot. You may you may be right. A lot of times you are right that you aren't gonna like this game. Sometimes you're wrong though. And sometimes it ends up being one of the best gaming experiences you've ever had. So Sink or so Swim fun. is that for me. It's super, super fun. And it's bonkers. Uh, my number one is uh, a situation where we got, got boxes, multiple <laughs> yeah, of know. stuff. There's minis. There's mats. There's all sorts of things. I was like, what is this like dice chucking behemoth bunch of nonsense? And that game was monumental. Yeah. Which I then, when I go in to read the rule book, realize is this deck building game. It's a Euro game. It's a it's a completely overproduced deck building Ridiculously game. Ridiculously overproduced. And I deck building area control game, yeah. Yes, but in a non-super combative yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. And so I did not realize that that's what this game was. And then all the minis and all the extra stuff became super cool because yes. they're like your leaders and your factions and, and they're, they're like really nice heroes minis. like Albert Einstein and all the miniatures are super, Shakespeare. Yeah. yeah, they're super nice. Uh, and the game is super fun. It's a deck building game where you have like a nine, a three by three uh, grid of cards yep. and you're going to choose one row and column which will give you five cards. I was like, that's a really cool way to go yeah. about deck building. I've and then you fill seen... in that once you're done with your turn. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen deck building done that mm -hmm. way. Like that's so cool. You're moving out on the board, you're controlling areas, you're getting resources, building buildings, doing all sorts of Euro game stuff, but just with all the glitz and glamour <laughs> Real talk. of like a Simon game. Yeah. And I was, it was kind of like, felt like, you know, like the new Castle of Burgundy might be, where it's like, we're gonna, we're gonna zhuzh this up. Yeah, totally. Hard. Yeah. And it was so cool. It was such a fun game, such a sound, it's solid. It's incredibly fun. You're advancing civilizations, the different factions are all very, uh, feels very natural to like those types of people uh, uh, and the history. There was so much cool stuff. And I, I just like, I didn't expect any of it. I didn't expect yeah. it. I wrote it off completely. This is still the biggest example of like, don't knock until you actually know what you're looking at. I, I was just like, this is some crap, whatever, you're fighting stupid stuff. And I'm like, no, it's like completely opposite yeah, of didn't, that. It's like Marvel, Marvel United for me. It's like, I didn't even look at it twice. Cause I was yeah. like, whatever. It's, nah, I'm didn't not gonna consider it. Yeah. And, and again, talking about Kickstarter regret, I'm like, I wish we'd gotten this back. That game, then. I don't think I don't even know where you can get it. I don't think it's at retail at all. I yeah, mean, it's too I'm big. Like, oh, I'm yeah. like, I really want this game. <laughs> we come in for Board Game Geek. Unfortunately, you're watching. Hit us Please. up. We would absolutely kill for a copy of Monumental. We'll do whatever <laughs> we have to. It's such a good game. Uh, and I was I was shook by it. Yeah, I remember mean, then you told that. me like this game's gonna be incredible, and I was like, What are you talking? about? I was like, No, you don't understand. It's all these things. Yeah, it's so good. That is 10 <laughs> games that surprised us. Down in the comments below, let us know what game Bam. surprised you. What game were you kind of like, mm, no. And then it turns out you actually really, really enjoyed it. Because, yeah. uh, you know, we, we all deserve to get knocked down a few pegs like that, you it, know? It's important. It's important. So again, let us know down in the comments below. Again, check out our Patreon. We're going to have 10 more games that surprise us over thank there. Thank you all the patrons here. You see scrolling Indeed, by. Indeed, thank you all. Get patrons, your name on that list when you come to Patreon today. Indeed, that's right. Um, we really, really appreciate it and all of y'all. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's going to be it, though, hey? That's it, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, I'm Mike. I'm Nick. We'll see y'all next time. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.